Identity and access management is one of the single most important functions in the domain of information security. Lack of a proper access control management will lead to data leakage incidents. Hello and welcome to Information Security Governance Risk and Compliance. My name is Salvador and today we will learn how to audit identity and access control management in an organization in 10 checkpoints. Let's get started. Point number one, check and verify if there is an access control policy. Make sure it covers physical as well as logical access management. Ensure roles and responsibilities are well defined and procedures and guidelines are developed accordingly. Make sure the policy contains compliance requirements as well. Point number two, access control principle. Ensure that the organization has implemented the principle of least privilege. An essential internal control in any organization designed to prevent conflict of interest or fraud and error is segregation of duties. Ensure that a maker and a checker or a maker and approver is implemented in the applications. Additionally, role-based access control is implemented in the organization. This ensures that the end users are given roles specific to their functions and activities. For example, a backup operator does not need domain administration rights. Point number three, user management. Check and verify if a user registration and deregistration process is implemented across the organization, whether in Active Directory, networks, applications or physical security. For user registrations, make sure that there are three entities in the access control process. The requester who asks for the access, the approver and the grantor, someone from the systems, applications or network sites who exercises the user creation activity. Ensure deregistration or de revocation of access is performed within the defined TAT. Similarly, while employees are transferred, ensure the previous access rights are revoked. Point number four, user access reviews. Make sure user access reviews are performed regularly. Check and verify that the generic users are either renamed or disabled. The default users and passwords are changed. Dormant accounts are deleted or disabled and service accounts are configured to run in batch or program to program calls. Ensure that no service accounts are able to log in. Point number five, secure sign-on. Make sure a single sign-on is implemented to access systems and applications. Ensure multi-factor authentication is implemented on critical applications, systems and network access. Check and verify that data center or server room or any specialized processing areas are secured with two-factor authentication to avoid unauthorized access. Point number six, account policy. Check and verify if the account and password policy is implemented as defined in the policy document. Ensure account parameters like lockout and password complexity is followed and users are aware of their responsibilities towards passwords. Make sure first time logins are required to change the password. Point number seven, account logging and monitoring. Make sure that all the authentication and authorization events are logged and reviewed on a regular basis. Ensure the logs are stored securely to avoid unauthorized tampering of the logs. Point number eight, credentials management. Check and verify if there is a secure way to communicate passwords to the users. Ensure all the passwords stored in applications are encrypted. Make sure that the databases that store biometric data is secure from unauthorized access. Point number nine, user access. Ensure net network access like VPN or Wi-Fi is granted as per the business requirements and reviewed the access regularly. For users that use USB pen drives, ensure that there is either a risk exception taken or an approval is in place. Ensure access to file server or SharePoint drive is granted based on the organizational functions and rules. Finally, the most important point in identity and access management is how the privileged user access is managed. Make sure that creating a privileged account like root 
equivalent or a super admin on granting these privileges to a regular users is followed as per the business requirement and upon approval similarly revoking privilege access rights or deleting privilege users from the system must be performed within the tat defined in the policy check if privilege access review process is defined and implemented to ensure all the privilege access rights are reviewed on all the systems critical systems like database applications network and endpoints thank you for watching the video do provide your feedback and like and share the video and do subscribe the channel to get the notifications of my upcoming videos thank you